Hey everyone, I'm Brian Parks, the CEO of Synapse Software, and in this video I want to talk about how to configure a service catalog in Slingshot. So in uh, the very first video I did on Slingshot, the first look at, at, at Slingshot, I showed a service catalog. And in this video, I want to show how I actually created that service catalog. And most of it is, is just going to be a demo. So let's get right into it. So here I have uh, my Slingshot instance uh, pulled up in a web browser. And you can see I've got a few uh, collections that I've created, services, service categories, and incidents. And those are what we're going to uh, show the configuration of in this video. But first, let's go over to service catalogs and let's click default service catalog. And you'll see this is what I actually showed in that previous video. Um, and this is what we'll be configuring. So you can see here, uh, these are actually a bunch of categories. If I click on one of them, I get some subcategories and then some services. And if I click on any of those, as you can see in the, the URL in the bottom corner, um, I'm not sure if you're, you'll be able to read that, it, it's kind of small on the screen, uh, but that actually goes to the, the new incident form to create a new incident. Uh, and I can, I can click back to get back up to the top layer, and then somewhere in here, I think it's employee information, uh, there's actually just one layer of category, and right here, these are just um, uh, services. Uh, so these go directly to the new incident form. Uh, without an additional layer of subcategories. Uh, and I don't show it here uh, in this particular example, but you could actually just have services directly directly on this on the screen here. Um, so one thing to note is that we don't just we don't have uh, multiple layers of collections to create those the multiple layers of drill downs. There's just categories uh, which can be parented as as much as as, as you want, as deep as, as you need, uh, and then services, which are the actual things that link to a, a, a new incident form. So let's, let's go ahead and go back to the service catalog list, and I'll click the edit button here. And then, pretty basic setup here. There's a title. Uh, if you want to change the title, you can just click on it. Uh, description. And then there are three sections of configuration corresponding to those three different collections that I mentioned. There's a service collection, a category collection, and an incident collection. And what that allows you to do is actually create multiple different service catalogs based on completely different collections, or maybe you have some overlap that you, that you want to do. Maybe um, you want the service collection and the category collection to be uh, different for an IT service catalog and an HR service catalog, but they all create uh, incidents in a single incidents collection. That might not make sense, but just as an example, that's something that you could do. Uh, you could also do, um, you could put all your services in a services collection and then have different categories for each uh, service catalog. That totally makes sense because the only services that show up on a service catalog are the services in categories that show up on that service catalog. So you could uh, put services uh, in a category that will only show up on the IT service catalog uh, if they're IT services, and then the HR services, you put them in HR uh, service catalog categories. So long-winded way of saying there are three different collections that you need to configure. The services, which are kind of the leaf nodes in the service catalog, the categories, which are how you drill down to those leaf nodes, and then the incidents, which is what actually gets created as a result of, of going through the service catalog. Uh, and each one of them has some additional uh, configuration. So the name, or the sorry, the title and the description fields are just the things that show up on that service catalog. So the name is was the bold piece, and the description was the short blurb underneath the name, uh, just to give a little more information about what that what that what that service is. And there's a similar one for the categories. So there's a title field and a description field. Really simple, straightforward. For services, they have a category, and this is what 
uh, determines what when they show up uh, based on how you've drilled down through the categories. Um, and I'll show exactly what they look like on the actual collections in just a second. Then here, for categories, the category parent field indicates the nesting. So if, uh, if a category has no parent, it will show up on the, certain, the main service catalog page. If it has a parent of uh, you know, whatever you've clicked on, then it'll show up when you drill down. And then finally, incidents. And there's two fields that are automatically set when you drill down to the, the new incident form uh, at that leaf at that leaf level. Uh, and that's category and service. And basically, the, uh, the category is populated from the very last uh, category that you've drilled down to. Basically, it copies uh, the, the value of the service, catalog, service category field to this, the field specified here. And incident service field is populated from the ID of the service uh, that you, you selected. Uh, so that you can, you know, do additional reporting on, on some of these things and, uh, and get, get more information about them. So that's basically it. That's how you configure a service catalog. Now, let's make a little bit clearer what these actually correlate to. So let's go over to collections. We'll go over to, uh, let's start with uh, service categories first. So this is the, the first few levels, or first level, uh, you know, the the categorization of your service catalog. So let's go ahead and edit the schema here. Name and description are the two fields that show up. Then we have parent uh, enabled. I'm not really taking advantage of here. Um, and then these are just some audit fields so I can see when they were created, who created them, that sort of thing. Um, and then of course there are some relationships, uh, subcategories, services. This is all stuff that I built through this UI. Uh, the, the service catalog uh, schema itself is defined in the system, but the, the service categories, the services, and the incidents, those are all schemas that I define, and then I tell the system how to use them uh, based on that, that uh, service catalog configuration screen that we just saw. Uh, so this just makes it easier uh, for the UI. If I were to pull up a service categories, uh, you know, a particular category um, in the UI, I could see the subcategories that are associated with it and the services that are associated with it. Uh, so if we go back to collections and look at services, you'll notice that in addition to all the normal stuff, it has a category which is pointing to service categories. So this is how the services are, are mapped into those, those service categories. So the, the service catalog knows uh, where, to sh where to show them in the UI and when, when to show them. You know, when I drill down to a certain level, and that's when it'll show these services. And of course, everything else is fairly straightforward. And then the last one is incidents. So let's go up to incidents. And then we have a name, description, you know, normal stuff for an incident, and then category and service. And those are the two things that are auto-populated. Auto um, and then for, I think the last video where I showed boards, I added this status field, which is an, an enumerated field to show different statuses. And then if we go back to the service catalog, we can see how these, these things work in action. So right here, I'm at a service catalog. It's showing the, um, the categories that have no parent. Uh, the category is from specifically the service categories collection, because that's what I defined for this service catalog to use, that have no parent set. So these are top level service ca categories. So if I click on one of them, you'll see it adds a GUID to the end of the URL to indicate that I'm, I've drilled down into a, uh, a, a service category. And now it's only showing categories that have a parent of this service category. So equipment request and conferencing services are set to have conferencing slash presentation as the parent. Now if I drill down even further, you can see that that GUID has changed. And now I'm only showing, uh, in this case it's services because I don't have a subsequent level of categories. These are services that have their category because that's what I've configured in that, that the service catalog definition 
That's what I've configured uh, to show up under the equipment request category. These, these have a, a category of equipment request. Now if I click on one of them, let's say USB speaker, now I get the new incident form. And you can see it set category to be that very last category and service to be that last service. So these are, are the, the IDs, the identifiers um, for the, uh, the category um, that was uh, the, the last category before uh, USB, uh, USB speaker. So that would be equipment request. And then the service is the ID of USB speaker. And you can actually see, you know, 39CD, that corresponds with, with this guy right here, this category, 39CD, that's the same good. Uh, we don't see it uh, anywhere in the URL, but this, this USB speaker uh, service has an ID of, of, of this right here. And then we can fill out this, um, th this incident form, you know, with, I need a speaker, and then presentation tomorrow. And then if I save it, you know, you'll see it shows up category equipment request, service USB speaker, because of that relationship that I've set up. And of course, the status is new. So that's basically it. That's that's how to how you set up a service catalog and how you'd use the service catalog in Slingshot. So I, I hope this demo was uh, was helpful for you, um, and I hope you it gave you a good understanding of of how service catalogs work in Slingshot and how you can build your own. Uh, some keys to remember are um, that you can have services and categories show up at the same level in your service catalog if you want. You don't have to, but the, the functionality is flexible enough that that's possible. Uh, you can have as many layers of categories as you want. Uh, you can have one layer of categories. You can even have zero layers of categories. You could just have services. Uh, you do need to specify a, a collection for the, uh, the, the categories, but there don't have to be any, any uh, categories in that collection with, with uh, no parents, um, at least for that, for that particular service catalog. You can just have services uh, that show up in that, in that level. You can have um, you know, four layers of, of categories before you get to services. You can have two layers of categories uh, before you get to services. You could have different layers of categories, different, different subcategories based on the different parent categories. So you can have, uh, like I showed, uh, em employee information was just a category that had services directly underneath it. Or you can have other categories that have subcategories before they have services. It's super flexible. It does exactly what you need it to, uh, as much flexibility as, as you need. Um, and then it, it, it just kind of goes, goes through the, the, the sequence and you, you click uh, the service at the end and it will bring you to uh, the form to, to log an incident or a service request. Uh, and it can use whatever collection that you want, uh, specified based on whatever fields you need uh, if you want to create your own collection and you want to call them title and uh, long description, totally fine. They don't need to be name and description like I have here. Uh, so lots of flexibility, um, pretty straightforward, pretty simple to, to configure. Uh, and I hope that that came across in this video. Uh, if you have any questions at all, be sure to leave a comment below, or you can always shoot us an email at info at synapsoftware.com. Uh, if you want to use Slingshot or if you want to explore how Slingshot can work for you, definitely go ahead and, and shoot, shoot us an email and we'd love to work with you and, and see what you've got going on and, uh, and, and, and see uh, how we can, we can be a good fit for you. Of course, uh, be sure to like this video if you liked what you saw here. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more like this and check out our past videos. I'll leave a link down in this down in the description to a couple videos that I mentioned uh, uh, earlier on in this video. Uh, and then share this you know, throughout your company with your colleagues. Um, and if you have any questions at all about how Slingshot works or how it can work for you, uh, 
like, leave a comment below, shoot us an email. Um, yeah, we'd love to. We'd love to have a conversation with you. Uh, thanks for watching, and have a great day.